Nigerian authorities have imposed a 24-hour curfew in the northern city of Kano after a string of deadly attacks on government buildings. The Islamist militant group Boko Haram claims responsibility. Nema El Bagher joins us live from Lagos, Nigeria with more. And Nema, uh, do we know how many people have been killed in these government buildings? Well, Natalie, the official death toll stands at seven, but eyewitnesses that we've been speaking to say that they say a truck, they saw, I should say, a truck stacked full of dead bodies traveling through the streets of Kanu. They're worried that the government is underplaying the death toll uh, out of fear that it will spark further tensions and, and fears on behalf of the local populace. This really was a systematic attack at the heart of government. The Assistant Inspector General's office was hit several police stations in which eyewitnesses tell us detainees were freed before they were bombed. I mean, it sounds incredibly audacious on the part of the militants. Our understanding is that um, motorcycle outriders firing weapons in the air went ahead of a green car which followed behind throwing the explosive devices at these targets. The sense really this morning in Nigeria is that the government has already closed the borders with Cameroon and Niger, who they have accused of allowing militants to move freely into Nigeria. They put in place a state of emergency, and they've also initiated their largest peacetime deployment of troops up into the north. Is there really much more that the Nigerian government can do, Natalie? Right, because it seems that this this terrorist group is certainly becoming more bold. They started attacking churches, Christians, and now it's government buildings. Has anyone been held accountable? Have they made any arrests? Uh, uh, is, is this a group that appears to be growing? Well, the government did manage very briefly to arrest the, the suspect they accused of masterminding the Christmas Day bombings on behalf of Boko Haram, Kabira Sokoto, but then very quickly lost him, Natalie. We have a, a still, I think I'm sure you're looking at, of his last moments in police custody, and that was also an incredibly audacious operation. He was sprung from amidst the police uh, cordon that was escorting him onto his prison cell, and as yet We've had the suspension of the police commissioner. The police uh, group that was guarding him is all under close arrest. And the inspector general of the police force here in Nigeria has been given 24 hours to produce him. But that really hasn't uh, yielded any results, Natalie. Uh, Nema El-Bagir for us there in Nigeria. Thanks so much for your reporting.